Hello and welcome back to the channel. Sorry it's been so long since I posted a video, but I've been really, really busy on a project with some sash windows. So uh, today we're gonna be replacing this door, door lining, and hopefully getting it all fitted in a single day. It's got a really bog standard door lining and the cheapest sort of ply flush door on here. So we're just gonna replace it with some doors that match the the Victorian doors, like the original Victorian doors. There was no bathroom in this house until the 1970s and recently had a bit of a renovation in there. So we're gonna sort the door lining out at the same time. What we plan to do is just to bring that all the way through to this side of the wall. So we've got a really nice wide door lining and then put an architrave around on this side so that it matches all the other doors and frames you know, we've got rebated linings here, proper rebated linings, proper doors, and everything's really good quality. So this this particular door actually lets it down. It's massively out of level, so this door has always swung shut like this. So it's about seven mil out of level on this jam side. I've measured this up the same way as I measured the wardrobe, but with the laser. So sit your laser level across on this plane, on this face of the door cast the line up and then we've measured to the outside of the frame here so basically our, our brick or plaster opening and I've taken the smallest measurement from both sides and the same in the height and that's given me the, the size of the outside of my door lining and then uh, I'll try and work it into the, a standard size door inside even though we're going to be making the door try to keep things to as near to standard sizes as possible. I think that ended up giving us a 23 mil thick piece where the door actually hangs in on the rebate there. So what I'm gonna do is just make up a, a narrow door lining frame, so about 70 mil in width. Just a very straightforward straight frame. And then to bring this rebated lining back across to this side of the wall, I'm just gonna use some half inch birch plywood and that's going to create my door stop on that narrow lining and it's also going to get around the fact that this side has been plastered so because I'm only going to use that half inch lining casting out to here I've not got to chip all this plaster off to get a full width lining in that would be sort of this outside width here because so I'd have to remove all this plaster back to around here to physically make that work so I can then run my architrave on that face of that plywood and it will look like a completely solid, fully rebated opening from this side. So it should look pretty good. And because we're making it all in the workshop, I can sort the hinges out, get everything pre-hung and done before we come and install this one. So I've got Kian coming to help me today with this one. So kian has been helping me with a few projects over the last few months. He's volunteered his time to come and help me in order to further his knowledge with joinery and stuff. So hats off to Kian for giving up his time to come and learn a bit more about the job. I'm gonna try and do this in a day because this is a non-profit job for a family. I did do a few bits last night in the workshop, so we're gonna look at what we've got done in a couple of hours last night. So I set Kian on planing up these bits of wood. These are gonna make up the door lining. So this will be the actual rebate face of the door lining and I got him to also put a coat of primer on as well so um, I've only primed one edge and one face because only 35 mil of that will be visible and then that half inch ply will just lip over and cast back to that other side that wall so he's dominoed that together and we'll glue that once it's uh, been sanded, uh, denimmed, ready for second coat. These are the half inch ply. I also got them glued up last night. I've added a lipping on, so that will be the lip in that the door shuts into. So I don't like leaving a, a plywood edge for a door stop. So I've just glued a little bit of tulip wood on the edge there, and then Kian actually sanded them off flush using the belt sander. So we've got this guide pad on the bottom of the sander. He set it so that it's just, just flush with the flat surface with that pad, so it stops the belt from doing any work. When you put the sander over that lipping that's sitting up proud, it just compresses the little brushes where the lipping is and allows you to sand the lipping off 
but doesn't take any material off the actual plywood. So it's good for flushing in a lip in like that. Now we've got one side flat. We will push it through the wide belt and take the other side off so that we've got a perfect half inch piece. I didn't want to cut another rip off of a sheet of birch ply because it's now like uh, a solid gold in terms of price. So I had this off cut of half inch that's actually got an oak veneer on it. I've got to take one side of the oak veneer off, get it back to that birch plywood finish and then flip it over and then take the oak veneer off of this side as well. So we should end up with some birch plywood door stops that all match once that veneer has been sanded off. While it was busy with that I've been sorting out the door rails so I planed up some Tulip, so this is the, the width board I had and we needed 220mm rails. These are for the rails on the door, so I put a glue joint in that, got that glued up and then got everything planed up as well. I can start work on making this door and set key in on sanding them bits down. Oh, and I didn't have time to print this off last night, but I did a quick drawing last night as well. So this is the door we're making and I took the measurements from the laser over here. So that's how I worked out my door lining size from the from this cross, as you remember, from the laser measuring video that I did. Taking the measurements, make the door lining size, then I've just drawn the door out. And having a plan there allows me to work on whatever component I need to without having it the door at that stage. So I've took my panel measurements, so I know that my panel finishes exactly 230 mil by 919 so I can also it's another job I can set key in on uh, cutting them panels to size and getting a coat of paint on them before I get the door to a stage where we need to glue the panels in oh and oh, I've got a wedding this afternoon I've just realized or remembered so probably not even gonna be a full day so we'll see what we can get done got eight mil deep grooves so this is the height of my top rail at 110 mil on the styles, I've allowed 8mm back because the groove is going to remove the edge of my tenon. And then I've got about 100mm left, so I'm going to do a 42mm tenon. By the time I've got a wedge on there, trimmed a bit off the door. On the outside of the door, it should look quite proportionate between tenon wedges and how much is left above it. Here she is. How are we? Good. Yeah. Kian got straight to work sanding them door stops down that will become the lining that protrudes back into the landing area. He's using the SCM Sandia wide belt sander and it's taking about half a mil off of the lipping at a time so it's just a couple of passes and then lippings are down to the finished thickness of the board. After setting out the mortises on the styles, I got to work cutting the rails to length and putting a tenon on the end. So I like to tenon the rails first and then set my mortiser up once the tenon is machined to thickness and is located on the ends of the rails. Traditionally, I always used to do it the other way around. So you put your mortise in the wood first and then set the tenoner up to suit the mortise. But I find that's really tricky and there's a lot of setup on the tenoner to get everything aligned, whereas doing it the opposite way around, so doing the tenon first, you just set your tenon thickness and give it a position, and then it's really easy to locate the mortiser to that tenon position just by winding the fence back and forward. Because this is a panel door with muntins, there's mortises in the rails as well. And of course, I set Kian off on the mortiser. A quick coat of paint on the door stops so they can get drying for later on. And then a little bit of education. So set your pins and then tighten that up. It will always move like when you tighten the screw. Just gauge it up through the end of that mortise just to... And you really need a gentle line. About right? Yeah. Ideal. And then gauge them all off the face. That's right. Yeah. It's like strong, quite a strong hand. Mm -hmm. It's like a, you're sort of rolling it in. Yeah. So 
everything's nice and strong against a piece of wood. You just like you're not floating off it trying to do it. So you gotta be kind of boss of it. Just take the weight of the head. You can put a block of wood under it. But you undo that nut. You have to like lift it up. So then put your bit of wood in, make sure it fits. Oh yeah. If it's out, I would take the bit of wood out, clean it, and just then double check it rather than adjust your mortiser all the while. Here I've set up the spindle moulder to put the groove in for where the panel will sit on all the door components. And then after finishing mortising, Ian gave the inside edges a sand with the belt sander to get them nice and smooth and remove the planar ripples. This is one of my favourite little gadgets that I've bought recently. It's for dispensing tape of any kind, so it comes in a, a few different widths. But it's an absolute godsend if you do any amount of masking. It's so easy to use and it always leaves the tape ready to go for the next piece. You can see Kian using one of the hinge jigs that I made there. So I did a, a video on how to make that really simple hinge jig and you get perfect results every time with it. While waiting for the paint to dry on the inside edges of the door, I decided to make the mouldings that we're going to need later on to mitre around the panels. This is quite a simple process of just using a wide piece of timber that is the thickness or the height of the moulding, moulding one edge, then ripping the moulding down after it's been run through the spindle moulder. If you plane the pieces up to the finished size and then try to mould them, it's nearly impossible to make such a big cut on such a small piece of timber. I denibbed the door lining, got it screwed and glued together and added a brace at the bottom to keep the, the bottom of the door lining the same width apart as the top. By this point the paint was dry on the panels and the inside edge of the door so I gave that all a, a denib. Again in order to keep things going forward we need the paint dry on the beadings later on so we're getting a coat of paint on them as soon as possible so that that uh, can be dry and ready to use when we need it. At this point we've got everything pretty much ready to go to dry assemble the door. We just need to cut the wedge room and, and haunches on the tenons themselves. So this is ticked over from the mortises and then squared down and cut out. You can either cut this out by hand or set up a, a bandsaw with a stop. I did a video on a router bit that cuts the haunches to a really nice accurate depth and it makes cutting the depth of their haunches and getting a nice finish on the top and bottom of your doors really really easy so I'll leave a link to that one in the description box below. The wedge room on a twin tenon has to be cut out with a coping saw. Once the straight cuts are made for the tenons the haunch or wedge room has to be removed. So from the edges of the rails it's easy to use a tenon saw but between tenons like this you need to use a coping saw. You just set the blade on kind of a 45 degree angle. It allows you to get the blade down the slot cut by the saw but also allows you to cut along horizontally without having to adjust the blade every time. Then we're on to a dry assembly. This is a really important step for a panel door. I would never ever glue a panel door up without a dry assembly first. Although it's a pain to get it to knock all together, it's absolutely essential to check none of the panels are too big. And like I said before, any of the haunches are too long and stop them shoulders from, from closing up nicely. It's the easiest way to get a twist in the door is to have a haunch or a panel slightly too long and you really put a load of pressure in your clamps to bring the shoulders together and that will create a twist in the door. I tend to cut just slightly low of your line because it's hidden inside the joint and you don't want a problem later on 
where the haunch is too deep and stops the shoulder from joining together. I like to assemble doors like this on the bench because of the, the way you have to assemble the inside of the door before you bring the styles together. If you try and do it in a vice vertically, you have to sort of lean the panels into the mortises and it just leads to you damaging some part of the door when something misaligns. So I like to get everything assembled in the middle, clamped together, then bring the styles onto the rails and hopefully it should all fit together nice and easy. I also like to clamp both sides of the door so it clamps it nice and even across the styles. If you just clamp from one side then it can deflect the styles so you end up with slightly wonky styles to rail if you run a straight edge across them. And it's time to hammer the wedges home. There's a very specific order in which to hit these wedges in. I like to seat the wedges to the innermost edge of the door just so that they support the tenon on the line that we've squared over. I don't let it push the tenon anyway further away because that's sort of your set out line. You need the edge of the tenon to meet that line. And then once they're seated, I hammer the, the bottom wedges in first to bring the rail nice and smugly up to them lines. Once the bottom wedges are driven home, then finish Apart by poor old kit. the top <laughs> wedges into place and really tightening and locking the joint. It's absolutely ideal if you can just get them wedges to seat home like that without damaging the wedge and without them being too loose. I just found this in my old bedroom. This is my one of my little school projects back when I was about 16. So what do you reckon to them joints? Max out of 10. Bit of break out there, look, I'm not happy. This frame is incredibly well fit. It would have been nice to have kept it if it was completely level, we could have repurposed it. There's no way I'm gonna to go to the effort of making and installing such a nice door into a frame that's completely out of level and wonky because it's so well fixed. I don't think there would have been a way to have adjusted it to get it level either. The frame was fixed into wooden slips that are between the mortar lines. So as I've removed it, it's pulled some of the plaster out because they're so big nails and it's damaged the plaster on either side I'm just going to cut either side of them here and then break the bits of wood around the nails and then snap or cut the nails off once the wood's out of the way There we go, got the frame out, made a bit of a mess of this because this, this wooden pallet has just pulled the plaster, it's quite common that uh, here, so I could have avoided it, it all be fair if I cut either side of them nails. The yeah, plan is both had our tasks sit to the do, frame in here that we've made, flush with this wall, and then take that half inch ply back to this side of the wall. So it went just got to do a little rebate detail on the frame at the floor level, just because the the floor transition between the candine or whatever it is that's going in the bathroom and the carpet is going in the centre of that rebate. So I've just got a I've got a bit of a height difference there to make sure the carpet's flush with the candine. So I've just got to rebate the front of the frame for that. It's currently half past three. I've got to be at this wedding. I've got to leave for four o'clock. So if we can get that door lining fitted, Kian has fitted the door into the lining. So in effect it will go straight on, so it should be fitted. We'll see if this fits then. Oh, beautiful.
All that screw's got to do is hold it in place. So I want one on both sides. These drills are awesome. You don't need to bring your SDS drill to a job like this. You can just drill through everything without any worries. So the lasers are giving me a third hand so I can get it all lined up off this screw. Not having to hold a level as well. It's pretty good to me. Hopefully you can see there that measuring it with that laser is tight at the top left, uh, top right there, um, and leveled down so there's a gap at the bottom, but bottom left is dead tight again, so measuring off that laser gets perfectly level frame to the maximum size of that opening. for today because I've got to go to this wedding it's uh, quarter past four so I'm a little bit late but door lining made everything to do with the door line is pre-made ready to go painted doors on uh, tomorrow ship it through the wide belt take the edges off give it a leading edge and get that painted as well and get all them beadings around to match the ones in the background and then uh, rim lock skirting and architrave, so not bad for a day's work. So back in on a Sunday to try and finish off, we sanded one face of the door just pretty much flush, so there was no glue protrusion, and then sent the door through the wide belt again. The wide belt sender is an incredible tool, and if you've not got one in your workshop and you've thought about getting one, I would 100% look to invest in such a machine. It has saved me so much time and money and the results you get off it as well are second to none it just it's perfect such a good tool and like my mate ben said when he was trying to convince me to get one he said if you're not a very good joiner it flattens all your rails and styles out as well so you get a nice perfectly flat door even if your construction method was a little bit wonky after the wide belt we run it over the surface planer with a little bit of a around a three and a half degree bevel on it just to take a leading edge off so that when you open the door it doesn't catch on the edge of the frame. The good thing about these drills is they don't smash the bricks or disturb the bricks because there's no impact. That is solid as a rock. Now, the key to why these concrete fixings work so well is because it threads into the brick and the frame, so you drill through everything with the same drill bit. And then th by doing so, it holds the frame that distance away from the brick, whatever it's set at. So you get like a, a rigid fixing. So then by using two, that frame physically cannot move. It's also dead quick. So I'm just gonna hold these up, see if Kian's 
Cut these in at the right length, look at that. I'll tell you what, it's better than I am. Yeah, it's, it's the perfect fit. <laughs> Arms itself in. I'm just gonna fit these in, just test fit that these boards are gonna physically fit in. Set up the laser to where the architrave wants to sit on this side of the wall. Then I can cut these boards down to save any heartache and then make the frame up once they've all been cut down. Just mark them green lines. While I was there, I added some blocks for that rebate lining to pin to and fix to, so we've got a solid fix in for them. And meanwhile, Kian was in the workshop, he denied them beadings, uh, mitered them round the door panels, and pinned them in place. So just fill this lid with foam, like I said. I see people really struggling with foam guns. The secret to keeping these going is to just not do too much with them. Don't use the cleaner. Leave the can on, just lock the valve off after you finish with it. Leave it well alone. You'll get a little bit of build up at the end. That helps to seal the end. So next time you come to use it, just scrape that build up of foam off the end where it comes out. So it's nice and clean just there. I usually just on a bit of mortar, scrape until you hear it touch the metal and that cleans the end of the tip up just nice. You can knife the excess off and just use it. So open your valve and it will work absolutely flawlessly. Ideally you'd take this outside to change the cartridge in case something went wrong with the valve and uh, then it starts spraying everywhere. You're not in somebody's house. Literally, hold one off, new one on, away you go. And I, I can't see why people seem to go through these guns and, and struggle with that. It is really, really simple. So once I've trimmed them lining pieces down, I made them into a little frame, applied the glue to them battens, and then slid it into place to fix it. I've taped the lower sides in so that they don't hit the glue as I slide it into place. Then I just set the rebate width to what I needed, pinned it to the lining, and then set a level line from the square top and pinned the sides down to then batten that I pre-prepared earlier. Then just a case of filling the cavity in with some expanding foam to stop it sounding hollow. Little top tip with the expanding foam is just leave it so it's slightly back from the edge when you finish filling it. It'll expand out and then if it expands further than you want it to, rather than letting it dry and trimming it off, as it starts to skin up so it doesn't stick to your fingers. So not quite there, there that bit there. So you, you can touch it without it sticking, but it's not set. You can actually just tap the surface of it and it reduces, the, it pops the air bubbles inside and that gives you a much a, a more sealed surface to the foam when it's gone off and it's also harder as well because you're concentrating the foam, you're removing the air bubbles and making a stronger surface. kian has been busy in the workshop, I've just moulded this skirt and we've planed all these bits up, that's a skirting block there for the architraves to run up to and he's also got the door sanded, finished, did absolutely everything to the door. So good old boy, did a brilliant job of that. Can get this thing trapped in the edge of the door, which I didn't realise he'd done beadings. until I watched the video back. And it's a proper, it absolutely hilarious. Nice door that is. So to spray the door, because we're in a bit of a rush, I hung it from the hinge recesses with a hook. Normally the doors you can spray them flat one face at a time to get the best finish but uh, like I say in a bit of a rush with hanging it up like this I can actually paint both sides and all edges of the door at one time so it just adds a little bit of speed to the operation and this is going to be a hand painted finish anyway so everything that I spray on here will be sanded back to a flat finish and then a final brush coat applied anyway. In terms of paint I'm using Sherwin Williams I'm actually going straight on with the top coat I prefer not to use a primer with my paint finishes 
primer is full of chalk and filler material which makes it really nice and easy to sand them back flat but it also creates a weak point in the coating so if you try and chip at a paint coating that's been used with a primer and then a top coat the coating will actually chip at that primer level so you get them horrible white marks or whatever colour primer you've used showing through to your finish whereas if you go straight on with the top coat you get a really strong adhesion to the wood very very difficult to chip that coating off he's got his new tractor he's come to show it off <laughs> he actually ended up with a Deutz tractor originally did a handshake deal on a class at the local dealership and then somebody else came in and offered slightly more money for it and they sold it to someone else which I think is pretty disgusting to be honest so uh, hopefully he gets on alright with the Deutz anyway back onto the woodwork I managed to get the skirting blocks and some skirting board fitted on the bathroom side and then rehung the door into the lining so we go that is the end of a really long weekend in terms of hard work for me but the results are, are couldn't be happier, absolutely brilliant. So uh, yeah, can't really complain at that for a finish. It looks beautiful. So just a few little jobs to do. I've just done a walk around and an outro and I've not turned my microphone on, so I'm having to redo it, which is really annoying. The skirting blocks are just sat in place because oh, I want to sort this wall out. So this wall is obviously going to need some filling and stuff over this bonding. I have a bit of a problem with the paint. It's reacting with the stuff below and it did before when it was decorated. So I don't know if it's something like talcum powder is causing a reaction that's got into the paint or the plaster. I don't know whether to strip it right back or it needs sealing or like a zinza bin or something. So if you've had this before where whatever emulsion or whatever you put on is reacting and causing this like crazed surface, I don't know if I can get the camera to pick up on that then uh, drop us a comment and give us an idea of something I can use on that that uh, will sort it out so I'm not going to pin any architraves or anything on so it's nice and easy to sand all that back and get a good finish on that looking for a rim lock as well to match the others in the house but they're not too urgent on that because I've got to get all the decorating and stuff done as well the paint's not fully dry bear in mind I painted this about two hours ago and it was quite a heavy coat to get that sort of grain fill and colour so on these beadings they're going to need a bit of denibbing just to get rid of some grain raising there it's quite heavy in places where the tulips really furred up probably wasn't the best bit of tulip to use really pleased with uh, with how everything's fitted down here like rebated over this flooring it's really nice and clean and fitted in fitted in well we're using this carpet strip I think to, to make the difference up between the candine flooring and the carpet so the, the flooring should then run pretty seamlessly between the two this carpet's been replaced if you were wondering I'm not sure at what point but uh, it's probably due a renewal it's been up a few times with various works we've had going on I've got to get in touch with Paul at Cutter Profilers UK to get this architrave moulding section made up it's a really really nice moulding so this is uh, 19 well it's 1890s this house was built and that's like an original these are the original moulding so Paul's going to make me up a section of that profile so if you're interested in having that profile or copying that profile then I'm sure if you rang him up and asked him for the profile that I used in this video then he'll be able to sort you out with that but yeah really pleased Kean's gone now he's gone off golfing so uh, he's making the most of his Sunday afternoon people I like to watch on YouTube is Ollie Blogs Agri Contracting and he does this thing where he says what percentage you are on that particular day so uh, these last two days we've been making this I am 100% I've uh, really good couple of days nothing's really gone wrong and the result I'm really really happy with the result so uh, let me know in the comments how you're feeling how your day has been in a percentage ollie blog style and if you see someone in there that's uh, really low on their percentage then spark up conversation with them try and raise that up a bit so anyway I'll catch you soon on the channel got some sash window videos coming up 
which should be a really, really good resource for anyone that's interested in that type of thing. Originally, I was gonna end that video there, and it was been waiting in the wings and waiting for me to have some time to edit it. And in that meantime, I've ended up getting the door finished. So this is the rest of the video in completely finishing the door and the opening into the bathroom. So I managed to find there's a guy on eBay selling a lot of ring locks and refurbished locks and the quality is so much better than what you would buy new for the same price point and in my opinion it is uh, it's better to have the original thing than a remanufactured one. We also went through one of my granddad's old ironmongery tins and I found these absolutely beautiful tiny little brass screws and they're just perfect for installing on the escutcheon here and a little bit too small for the rows on the handle there but they it's just a, a wonderful thing to to open that box up and find such a, a gem of a little box of screws these are the cutters as well that came from paul he got these sent out to me next day we've got them cutters loaded up into a block and in a spindle molder and i like to run them through with a backing block like shown here and it just straightens out the architraves any bends in the timber and it also stops any bounce when you're molding it so that bounce causes ripples in the actual molding whereas when you, it's backed with that board across quite a long length while it's harder to push it through the machine it actually gets a superior finish because you don't get the ripples in the molding and that saves an awful lot of time sanding and i hate sanding Beautiful exit hole. Ooh la la, it's perfection. Check the keyhole. One thing I hate to see on a fitted door is a butchered keyhole. It just takes a tiny bit of patience and time to cut that keyhole nicely and it makes all the difference. So I'm going to cut around this really really neatly for the other side. I've got a precision screwdriver set and the first precision screwdriver I pulled out was too thick to fit the head of that so I've managed to find one that fits. I think I'm just going to use the screwdriver as a bradle.
perfect. Pretty difficult to even start the screw because they're so small. And there we go, that is the finished project. I'm really pleased with how it turns out and I think you'll agree it looks pretty stunning from this side of the room. I managed to get over the paint issue on the walls by using the Zinzer bin with the shellac in it. So that was a, a sealer coat that encapsulated whatever it was that was on the walls that was causing me a problem. And then the next layer of my emulsion covered it beautifully. The landing side of the door still needs painting to a finished colour that that room will be but we've not yet decorated in there so that's a future project. So if you made it to the end of the video and you enjoyed what you saw then don't forget to hit the like button it really helps to help the channel grow and leave a comment to let me know what you think and a big thank you to Kian for helping out on this one so if you've got any messages of support for him as well, then again, drop them in the comment box below. If you want to show Kian some support, then I'm going to activate super thanks on this video. That's a YouTube feature where you can say thank you by sending a monetary donation through YouTube. So there should be a super thanks button just underneath this video. So if you click that, any super thanks that I receive from this video, I will pass that money directly onto him to help him along with his woodworking career. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.